When a baker's wife catches the attention of a holy inquisitor, he falsely accuses her of witchcraft. Because of this, her husband embarks on a mission to save her from the man who believes all sinners must endure pain. In 1492, Grand Inquisitor Torquemada sentences the long-deceased Don Alfonso de Alba Molina with heresy. This makes his bloodline deemed impure. Therefore, his family's wealth is forfeited to the church. Despite the unusual circumstance of punishing a mere skeleton, Torquemada administers a severe penalty of 20 lashes, causing Don Alfonso's bones to crumble. Contessa, the man's wife, cries over this injustice, but Torquemada remains unapologetic. He then commands his men to grind Don Alfonso's bones and put the ashes in an hourglass. Days later, Antonio and his wife Maria are busy baking bread to sell for the auto de fe, an event where Contessa and her son are to be publicly executed. Maria expresses her moral qualms, believing it to be wrong to profit from someone else's suffering. However, Antonio counters that they need the money. Later, the couple sells their bread in the plaza. However, they get separated when the crowd gets excited by Contessa's arrival. Antonio is relieved when he finally finds Maria, and they decide it's time to head home. However, the guards refuse to let them leave, asserting that they must witness the work of the Holy Inquisition. Just then, Captain Don Carlos de Leon of the Civil Guard and Torquemada make their appearance. Contessa, who faces the threat of being burned alive, desperately pleads with the executioner to spare her from a horrible death. She gives him her ring as payment, so the executioner strangles her instead. After this, her son is punished in front of the crowd, all while he watches his mother die before him. When she finally dies, the executioner burns her at the stake. Unable to withstand this cruelty, Maria runs to the guards and pleads with them to stop. When Antonio tries to defend his wife from the guards, De Leon knocks him out. Before the man can attack Maria next, Torquemada pacifies the situation. Maria firmly grabs the Inquisitor's hand, pleading with him to release her and Antonio. However, as he gazes over her beautiful face, a strange feeling burns within him. In the grip of confusion, Torquemada accuses uses Maria of witchcraft. The guards quickly cut her forehead, which they believe will prevent witches from using their powers. After this, Maria gets locked away, leaving Antonio unconscious on the plaza. When he wakes up, he asks a civilian about Maria, and the man replies that she's imprisoned in the castle. With this, Antonio immediately heads to see Torquemada, testifying that his wife isn't a witch. To prove that he isn't a heretic, he mentions that he once worked as a cook in the king's army. However, Torquemada's mind is fixed, and he dismisses Antonio. That night, Maria gets summoned by Torquemada. Torquemada and his brethren. She gets humiliated as the guards render her bare for them to look for any witch's marks. Dr. Huesos, Francisco, and De Leon then take their time examining her body, all while discreetly lusting over her. When they plan to see if she has any hidden charms, Torquemada reminds them that this isn't a sport. Annoyed, one of the men pinches Maria and claims that she has a mark urging Torquemada to see it for himself. Torquemada's actions seem withdrawn, but he reaches out to Maria and eventually notices her crucifix necklace. He quickly snatches it, then he walks out. Maria is shocked by his actions and later gets sent back to her cell. To her surprise, an elderly woman is in the cell with her and she's an actual witch named Esmeralda. However, the woman mentions that she's not the kind of witch that worships the devil, but rather she studies medicine and heals the sick. Meanwhile, Torquemada summons his loyal follower, Mendoza, who has just survived being crucified for a sin he committed. Torquemada then wriggles his fingers into Mendoza's wounds, claiming that the Lord saved him. However, he now needs to be saved too, so he tasks Mendoza to flog him. Despite Mendoza's hesitation, he does as he's told. Torquemada gets whipped while kneeling on the shards of a broken vase. He then gazes over the portrait of Mother Mary, but thoughts of Maria's face and body keep resurfacing in his mind. With this, Torquemada prays that these thoughts disappear. The following day, Antonio strikes up a deal with Gomez, one of the dungeon's workers. After paying his way in, he hangs onto the man's cart and eventually makes it into the vicinity. Once they're inside, Gomez plays cards with Torquemada's men, allowing Antonio to look for Maria. When he finally finds her, they plan to escape, only to find that Gomez has ratted on them. De Leon commands his soldiers to shoot them, but Torquemada stops them. Instead of killing the couple, he orders his men to imprison them in different cells. The following day, Esmeralda is willing to confess that she's a witch, but Francisco asserts that they only accept confessions under torture. Otherwise, her confession is only regarded as a way to escape the pain. They force water into her mouth while pinching her nose so she'd suffocate. Soon, Esmeralda concedes to the accusations against her, but the executioners continue her torment. Just then, she stops moving, causing Maria to call them murderers. Enraged, Mendoza puts Maria on the rack and stretches her limbs. Francisco stops him, saying that the woman's trial is not due until the next day. However, Mendoza remains steadfast and tells Francisco to proceed with the confession. As the men stretch Maria's limbs to their limit, she suddenly hears 
hears the soothing voice of a woman beckoning her. In an instant, she gets whisked away to a heavenly realm, where she finds Esmeralda. Before anything else, Esmeralda tells Maria not to look down. She then claims that she sensed the younger woman's potential to become a witch. Despite Esmeralda's warning, Maria succumbs to panic and looks down, causing the paradise to vanish. She abruptly returns to the torture chamber, where agonizing pain awaits her. Suddenly, Torquemada, who is overseeing the event upstairs, bursts into the room and commands his men to free Maria. He learns that Mendoza spearheaded the torture, so he reminds them that the next man to kill a prisoner on trial will be tortured. After this, Torquemada takes Maria, insisting that he'll take her confession himself. Later, Maria wakes up in Torquemada's chambers, but gets alarmed when she sees a sword hanging above her. Torquemada suddenly speaks, explaining that he purposely sleeps beneath the blade, believing that if God willed it, his life would be swiftly ended. He then gets down to business and tells Maria to confess. However, she denies the allegations, so Torquemada drags her to where he oversees the confessions. There, she sees Antonio being forced into the iron chair, where he's expected to sit over the flame. To everyone's surprise, Antonio laughs at the men's attempt at torturing him. Unaware that this is a mere distraction to free himself, the men remove him from the chair, which allows him to fight them. Maria screams at him to run, but he can't find where her voice is coming from. Maria runs downstairs while escaping from Torquemada's clutches. She manages to open the door for Antonio, who then takes Torquemada as a hostage. The Inquisitor promises that the church will show him mercy if he lets him go. Believing that Torquemada is a man of God, Maria asks her husband to trust that he cannot lie. As the couple argues about this, Torquemada makes his escape. Naively, Maria reminds Torquemada to uphold his promise, but he dismisses her, asserting that death is a form of mercy. Consequently, the couple finds themselves imprisoned once more, confined to separate cells. Later, the Cardinal, an emissary from Rome, arrives at the castle to deliver a message with the Pope's seal. The Cardinal announces that the Pope wants the auto de fe to stop, along with the use of torture in the Inquisition. Torquemada accuses Rome of being outdated and the Pope of losing his mind, but this enrages the Cardinal. The man replies that the Pope must be respected, so Torquemada must honor the holy man's command of him to return to Rome. The Inquisitor demands proof from the Cardinal, so the man presents a scroll with the Pope's seal. However, Torquemada sets it on fire, ensuring that it would appear as though the Cardinal never reached the castle due to an accident. With this, he accuses the Cardinal of being vain, which the church discourages. He then tells his men to cuff the poor man behind the cellar's walls. Shortly after, the men ensure that the Cardinal doesn't escape by cementing the wall before him. As they do this, Torquemada declares that sinners are getting used to pain, so he intends to find more ways of torment to save their souls. The following day, Maria confesses to Torquemada that she's a witch, so that she can free Antonio. Torquemada also decides to tell his truth, claiming that he loves Maria. He explains that his affection isn't rooted in her perceived sins, but rather stems from romantic love. Taken aback by his confession, Maria immediately asserts that she is a married woman. Nonetheless, Torquemada remains convinced that eliminating Antonio can resolve their situation. Maria pleads not to do this, offering to never see her husband again as long as he lives. Torquemada agrees to her plea, but he asks if she'll love him back. Maria cries as she says yes, if this means saving her husband. Torquemada then gives her a rosary and an opulent blue robe, telling her to wear it while he ravishes her. Maria cries as the man explores her body, so she prays for God to help her. Surprisingly, the sword above them moves, which shocks Maria. Meanwhile, Torquemada bails, blaming Maria for his desires. He quickly strangles her, wanting her dead. Once again, Maria desperately asks God for help, and this time, the hanging sword finally falls. Before it can fall on Maria, Torquemada coincidentally pulls her to him, preventing the blade from harming her. Interpreting the event as a divine sign, Torquemada believes that God doesn't want him to take Maria's life. However, he's aware that his prior actions may have severe consequences, so instead of killing her, Torquemada cuts off her tongue. After this, Maria gets dumped back to her cell, where Esmeralda immediately offers her assistance. She insists on bringing her to the meadow where they met, and there, Maria can heal and learn to use her gifts. She assures Maria that upon her return, she will be imbued with wisdom and strength. Though hesitant at first, Maria eventually agrees. Shortly after, her mortal body succumbs to death, and she transcends into the concealed paradise. Right away, Esmeralda alerts the guards that Maria is dead. She insists that they dispose of the body outside the castle, thinking that when Maria returns, she'll be free. Soon, Wesos, Francisco, and Gomez are baffled upon seeing Maria's corpse, knowing that none of them are responsible. Despite this, Francisco takes Gomez to discard the body. Antonio catches a glimpse of his wife's body being taken away, though he's unable to do anything but weep. Once out of the dungeons, Torquemada stops Gomez, shocked at the woman's death. He interrogates his men on who did this, and Francisco hesitantly says that Mendoza told them that he insisted on killing Maria. However, Torquemada denies the allegations, saying he has no reason to kill her because she's innocent. Instead, he blames Esmeralda for bewitching them all. That night, Torquemada holds a funeral 
for Maria. He dresses her in the finest clothes and even puts her in a stone coffin inside the castle, which he claims will be a shrine dedicated to her. Afterward, Torquemada commands his men to burn Esmeralda at the stake. Unbeknownst to everyone, she has stuffed herself with gunpowder before the execution commences. When it's time, she proudly claims that she's a witch and that she curses everyone. She warns that the executioner will die in the very flames that he's using to kill her. She then turns to Torquemada, claiming that he'll die in his own tortures. However, Torquemada proves his innocence, proclaiming that if he's lying, then may his tongue be cut. To their surprise, Torquemada's words backfire and his mouth oozes with blood. In Esmeralda's last moments, she prays to God, hoping that he'll let Maria live. Just then, the gunpowder inside her explodes and her bones pierce through the people nearby, including the executioner and some civilians. Meanwhile, Maria wakes up inside the stone coffin, unaware that Torquemada is kneeling just beside her. There, he breaks down and asks for forgiveness for loving her and killing her. Unbeknownst to the Inquisitor, Mendoza overhears this. Soon, Torquemada plans to kill Antonio with his latest torture device, a pendulum blade. As the blade slowly suspends from the ceiling, Maria telepathically begs Antonio to rescue her. Sensing her words, he asks Torquemada for Maria's whereabouts. However, the man merely replies that she's dead. Meanwhile, Maria struggles to free herself but soon runs out of air and loses consciousness. In the torture room, a horde of rats comes running to Antonio, and he prays that they'll bite the ropes to set them free. Coincidentally, the blade is suspended low enough to slice a rat on top of him, so he reaches for the rodent's corpse and squishes it in his hand. This soaks his bound wrist with its blood. Above him, Mendoza confronts Torquemada for overusing his power. He says that he has always been innocent, and so is Maria, but this time, he won't let Torquemada kill another virtuous soul. The two then get into a fight while Antonio finally breaks loose. However, the blade runs through his belly once, wounding him. Meanwhile, Mendoza accidentally pushes a lever, which opens a pit where Antonio is sitting. As he hangs upside down, Antonio can see the sharp spikes and the remains of the previous people who died there. Meanwhile, Torquemada overpowers Mendoza and stabs him with a crucifix dagger. After this, he sees Antonio's dilemma and happily pushes the lever to close the pit. However, Antonio manages to hoist himself free, which enrages Torquemada, so he summons the guards. The guards immediately run to the area, but Antonio refuses to surrender. He manages to grab one of the guards' weapons and utilizes it to defend himself. He soon faces De Leon, overpowers him, and pushes him into the pendulum, which slices the man in half. With all the guards dead, Antonio looks for Maria and senses that she's in the coffin. He pushes the lid open with his remaining strength, revealing his wife's unconscious body. Just then, Torquemada appears with a new set of guards, whom he commands to kill Antonio. However, everyone gets stunned as Maria rises from the coffin. Without speaking, her voice resounds clearly in their minds, accusing Torquemada of being a murderer and a blasphemer. Taken aback, Torquemada tries to justify himself, claiming that he never intended to kill her despite his love for her. However, as blood once again stains his mouth, he is overcome with panic and flees the room, unable to face the consequences of his actions. He hides in one of the chambers but gets haunted by Esmeralda's ghost, who reminds him that he'll die in his own tortures. Torquemada flees, only to be greeted by Contessa's disfigured ghost. As he backs away, he knocks down the hourglass containing Don Alfonso's ashes, which then transforms into a skeletal form. Horrified, Torquemada seeks a place of solace but ends up in the room where the pit and the pendulum are. There, Maria, Antonio, and the rest of the guards confront him. As Torquemada pleads for mercy, the pit opens and he falls to his death. It turns out that Mendoza pulled the lever, revealing that he survived the Inquisitor's attack. He then falls before the rest, and with his last breaths, he asks Maria for forgiveness for letting Torquemada cut off her tongue. Confused, Antonio asks Maria how she could call him despite being unable to talk. She doesn't explain how this is possible, but only tells Antonio she loves him through her mind. Soon, the couple frees all the prisoners in the castle. Wessa stops them, but Francisco backs them up, claiming that Torquemada previously declared Maria as innocent. He further tolerates the freedom of the other prisoners, saying that there will always be others. With this, Maria and Antonio hold hands, and together, they walk out of the castle gates, ready to bask in their newly found freedom. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.